Hello, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I just rise to speak on behalf of New Zealand First on the Veteran Support Bill. And um, I just want to read Clause 25. The purpose of the code is to meet the reasonable expectations of veterans and claimants, including the highest practicable standard of service and fairness. And I think that's a really good statement, sir. It's about um, service, the highest standard of service and fairness, because these um, individuals, men and women, gave us their highest standard of service. They, um, they went away in a variety of conflicts to, um, to stand for us on those fields of battle. And I, I want to acknowledge um, my grandfathers. Both of them served in World War II, both in different ways. My mother's father went to Egypt um, and also Italy and served um, in the New Zealand engineers, and my father's father was um, the second officer in charge at the Featherston prisoner of war camp um, during the particular period of the Featherston riot. So both men saw very different service for their country, but they went nonetheless. Um, some, some might say that they went for adventure. Some really went because we asked them to. We asked them as a nation to go and stand against an evil that, um, that we believed needed to be stopped. And, and they were among many. And they expect and should expect the highest practicable standard of service and fairness from their country when they come home. And they go on to try and lead normal lives, some of them after um, terrible ordeals in the field on our behalf. And I, I also want to remark on how good it is that we have moved on as a nation, and as many nations have, where we now recognise, un, unlike how we thought as a nation in the 1960s, um, when we had uh, some of our servicemen take off their uniforms and get back into civvy clothing late at night and go home quietly without any recognition, we now recognise that these men and these women serve and carry out orders because we have asked them to do so. And, um, and we acknowledge their service and, and hold the decision makers to account for these conflicts as opposed to some of the, um, some of the scenes that we had in the 1960s and the 1970s after Korea and Malaya and so on. And I also just want to take this moment to acknowledge Sol Tefata, who passed away on Sunday. Um, Sol was a member of the 28th Māori Battalion in A Company. He passed away on Sunday morning in the Hokianga, and his, um, his tangi will be on Thursday. And our thoughts are with him. He uh, was one of two of the last surviving members of the Māori Battalion in the north. Um, he, he lived to a ripe old age. He had three wives, I believe. Um, so he was certainly a man with spirit um, and, um, and a, a man who, who gave for his country and then came back and continued to participate in his community and with his family and, and lived his life to the full. So um, our thoughts go to him and to those who served with him who are no longer with us, to those who served with him who are still with us and deserve our care. And that is what this bill is about. It is about making sure that, that those who served, both those gentlemen who are, who are of a passing generation and the new veterans that, that, um, that are coming, because the world will never be a 100% peaceful place. That is something we might wish for, but we, every now and then, men and women of our nation are going to have to stand up for us and going to have to go into conflict, whether to protect others or whether to actually put forward um, a line, to create a line in the sand that says no more, this is wrong, and um, we are here on behalf of the New Zealand people to say, uh, stop or we will actually enforce international law. So just a quick call, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, um, again to, to reinforce New Zealand First support for this bill, um, our disappointment that it's taken so long. We believe it's timely. We believe that the burden of um, proof with regard to um, medical claims and so on and so forth should not be on the veterans. That if medical records have been lost, and um, then it is, not, it is not for them to have to try and convince a bureaucrat in an office somewhere that when they served their country, the illness now, that they now suffer um, 
has come has come out of that service. David Shearer. Yeah, look, I, I just want to pick up on a couple of points that were made in, in the uh, in the.